Hello, my dear viewer. Tis I, Jimmy. Today, we are going to look at a game that I've been wanting to look at for quite a bit. Not because it's a generally good game, but because it's kind of an oddity. Today's game, if uh, you couldn't tell, is... Haunted Castle. Not Castlevania, but Haunted Castle. But we're going to get into it. Because, uh, this is for some gameplay real quick, yeah? Ah uh, yes, Haunted Castle. The game that's Castlevania game, but isn't a really good Castlevania game. And the backstory to the game development is actually a lot more entertaining than the actual game itself. So, let's start off the way we normally do, and let's start off with the story. A quick, quick, quick recap of this game's story. So, the story starts off with Simon Belmont coming from church after getting married to his wife, who is called Selena slash Serena, depending on what translated uh, story you're reading on whatever website. And Dracula swoops in and steals her away. It's kind of fun to note that Simon Belmont literally looks like he belongs in a goddamn glam metal band. Like, look at him on screen. He looks like he, be he belongs in a glam metal band. It's kind of a funny look to see a literal barbarian in a tuxedo. It is hilarious to me. So... Obviously, since Dracula kidnapped your wife, you are on your way and you trespass through six of uh, Dracula's properties to go and rescue your wife. Obviously culminating in a final battle with Dracula himself. Obviously, you fight Dracula twice because this is Castlevania, damn it, and we do not shy away from tradition here. Next up, guys, is the gameplay. How does the game play? How does the game feel? So, the game. The game feels like a Castlevania game, albeit a rather incomplete Castlevania game. There are things that feel kind of wrong about this game. So, to give you an example of that, the holy water is not in the game, but you do get an item that takes the place of the holy water, and that would be the bomb, which is a really funny item to have for Simon Belmont. Right now, let's talk about Simon Belmont. He moves like Simon Belmont. He's got his classic Simon Belmont walk, that strut that he's got, that barbarian strut, obviously inspired by Conan the Barbarian. So yeah, he has his whip. He can crouch, he can jump, he can attack, he can use sub weapons by holding up an attack. Very, very Castlevania-esque. You can obviously only hold one sub weapon at a time, as is tradition here. Because as I mentioned, we don't shy away from tradition in Castlevania. And yes, the game. I'm gonna put this on the normal arcade board, which is called Iteration M. This game is extremely difficult. A lot of the enemies can take you out rather quickly. Like, holy flipping head, guys! These enemies, the Fleeman in particular, are extremely extremely just dreadful and even some of the other enemies that you find here and even some of like the really cheap traps like literal beginners traps that you run into are absolutely terrible usually in castlevania gameplay you get two upgrades for the whip so you get the vampire killer obviously is the one you start off with the upgrade to that turns into the morning star and then the upgrade to that is the lady pleaser itself the extender. So, you know, gives you a longer whip. Okay, cool. In this game, though, you start off with Vampire Killer in its most basic form, Leather Whip, and then you get the Morning Star, and the final upgrade is actually the use of Simon Belmont's sword, which is extremely fascinating because you see Simon Belmont with the sword all the time, specifically in the art from the era of the time. In fact, you can actually see him with the sword on the NES version of the game, like on the cover art itself. It's pretty interesting to note that 
uh, NECA, a toy company, did release the NES Simon Belmont, and he actually has a sword, which he can actually unsheath, which is pretty fucking cool, but that's a, an entirely separate thing altogether. So, I'm gonna say this outright, if you are gonna play this game, I recommend definitely playing it on a much lower difficulty to actually get some enjoyment out of the game, otherwise this game is kind of a slog. Graphics and sound. All the enemies look like they're supposed to, so this skeleton looks like a spooky, creepy skeleton. This zombie looks like a rotting corpse. The birds look like birds. Suits of armor look like suits of armor. Frankenstein's monster looks like Frankenstein's monsters. Frankenstein's monster, I should say. All the flea men actually look like flea men. They don't look like weird little monkeys like they like I initially thought they were when I first played Castlevania years ago on NES. And uh, yeah, all the enemies look like they're supposed to. So, oh boy, we're gonna talk about the sound. The game. First off, I'm gonna break this off into two parts. The sound effects in the game. The sound effects are okay. They're perfectly serviceable if you kill a skeleton in the game. It has this really weird sound effect on it. Like after the bones kind of, you know, they do this thing. It's it's a weird sound bite. In fact, I'll play it for you guys right here. Did you hear it? It's such a weird sound bite, I don't really know. Granted, during the middle gameplay, you're not gonna hear it because you have the music blaring in the background. Which, hey, segue into music. Holy flippin' heck, guys. Music. So, there are a couple mainstays, like tracks, in this game that have become pretty much, or carried over. The level one theme is actually a pretty, 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 pretty big song. It's one of my personal favorites. Bloody Tears also makes its appearance here, uh, which, it's Bloody Tears. There's literally a portrait in, in the background of the stage where Bloody Tears appear of a lady literally crying blood. Hey, I guess pretty spot on pretty literal but okay whatever you know so yes music is absolutely phenomenal when it wants to be there are a couple instances when the music is like yeah I guess that's that's cool I guess a couple instances here and there but hey they can't all be bangers right so the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the thing that I actually want to talk about and that is the behind the scenes of the game Around six months into the game's development, one of the higher-ups Konami noticed that the game wasn't looking so hot. The game was terrible, it was way behind schedule, and the game was also short-staffed. So what did that head end up doing? He grabbed a bunch of completely different people from a project called Hot Chase and he put them to work at this game. They spent an entire month redrawing all the sprites and backgrounds. They end up getting the Castlevania atmosphere finally fine-tuned. And a lot of the unfinished stages were brought up to par as well to Castlevania standards. Because the schedule was already so tight, there wasn't a lot of time left for any additions or any changes. The only really big addition that was done was a crumbling bridge stage, which we actually do see again in, in Super Castlevania 4. Due to the tight scheduling already set in place, there wasn't a lot of time left for quality assurance, so the game set out to squash all the bugs already in the game. While the game itself isn't entirely perfect, and it's not really the greatest, there aren't really a lot of glitches in the game to be had. But quality assurance is pretty lacking, and it shows in the final product, unfortunately. You can find it as a standalone release as part of the Arcade Archives collection by Hamster Corporation either on the Nintendo Switch or the PS4. I don't recommend it for $7 or $8. I don't even recommend it for half off, $3.50, $4. That's still way too much for this game. But I can recommend it if you do pick it up in the Konami Arcade Classics collection. Honestly, that's the only way I can recommend this game. For 20 bucks, you get a piece of crap and you do get really good games. Like you get Salamander and you get Typhoon, which is underrated in your Konami Arcade scene. So, yeah, you can pick it up on there. And sure, yeah, you get Haunted Castle as a weird novelty, but you also get some really good Konami Arcade games. Though, thankfully, you can change the difficulty, so you can set the damage parameters to either 
high if you're a masochist, so you can get killed in two hits, and the overall difficulty of the game at, to high as well. Or you can do it the way I did and play this game. You can play it on either the game as on normal and the damage parameters on either uh, low or lowest if you're not feeling too confident because this game does get absolutely wild. It is October. It is finally October. It's a spooky, spooky, creepy month. Guys, remember that you're loved. Remember that you're beautiful. And most importantly of all, remember to stay absolutely radical, guys. And thank